according to his word. Good morning and welcome to our service of morning prayer on this fourth Sunday of Advent. The service can be found on page 47 of the Book of Alternative Services and in the booklet that was handed out on your arrival this morning. In accordance with the protocols we presently have in place, please take your copy home with you at the end of the service, put your name on it, and bring it with you to all future services of morning prayer. I now invite uh, Maxine Moulton and Lynn Young to the front to light the Advent candle. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of love. Jesus shows us God's perfect love. He is God's perfect love in human form. Those who believe in him and live in him live in love. Love transforms and perfects all things. It never ends. We light this candle today to remind us that God is love. We thank God for hopes he gives us, for the peace he bestows, for the joy he pours into our hearts, and for the love that redeems us and shows us the way. Let us pray. O oh God of love, Emmanuel, Send your light into our hearts at this time. Help us to be ready for the time of Christ appearing. Grant that we may so dwell in him that his perfect love fills our entire being. Make our worship a time in which we celebrate your love and are made ready to show that love to the whole world, both today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Peace 
and justice for everyone. Carpenter Square, Joseph, do not be afraid. What a wonderful father Joseph was for Jesus. We first met Joseph in Matthew 1, verses 18 to 25, as he contemplates how to deal with Mary's pregnancy. Joseph is an honest, caring man who does not want to embarrass Mary. So he intends to quietly divorce her. Imagine his wonderment and joy as he heard from the angel the good news and true identity of Jesus. Joseph continued his caring in times of danger as they escaped to Egypt. Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, 
and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The canticle can be found uh, in your pew leaflet, and we will say it together. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his holy servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their deceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help and to serve in Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and to his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. <coughs> Stand. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestors, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of Christ. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. Amen. When you were young, what did you dream of becoming when you grew up? I wanted to be either an architect or an interior designer. And I spent many hours as a child filling several journals with drawings of house plans. Once I finished high school and moved to the city to continue my education, I swore I would never return to live in a small town like Dryden. But unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, that's not the way things turned out. I did not become an architect or designer, but became a teacher instead. And I returned here over 30 years ago to build a life for my children and me. Thinking back now, perhaps my original plan was just wishful thinking that lacked substance and conviction. Or maybe circumstances beyond my control killed that dream. On another level, though, it points to the assumption most of us have that we are ultimately responsible for creating the life we want. Look at your own relationships, family, home, education, jobs and careers, these are all attempts to create your life. We have decisions to make and many opportunities before us. However, the difficulty arises when we believe that the creation of our life is our sole responsibility. In our first reading this morning from the book of Samuel, King David was convinced that he was the one to build a house for God, a big, fine, cedar house like his own. But God said, no, 
and reminded David that he and he alone is the builder and creator of life, and it has been that way from the very beginning. In the creation story found in Genesis, God says, let there be, and his words bring forth creatures into the world. In our gospel reading today, Mary says, let it be, and her words will bring forth the creator into the world. God chooses human flesh, not a cedar house, as the place of God's dwelling. And like Mary, each of us is called to carry the life of God within our own humanity, to discover the life God is creating in us and who we are supposed to be when we grow up. But why, we ask, did God choose Mary? I can almost bet that Mary, like every other young woman, had plans for how she wanted her life to unfold. As we know, though, her life after her encounter with the angel Gabriel was surely not the life she envisioned. And I wonder whether, over time, Mary truly felt favored and blessed. How did she feel walking through town, the subject of stares and judgment because she was pregnant and unmarried? What about when Joseph planned to quietly leave her and avoid the scandal? Surely Mary did not feel favored and blessed when she was forced to give birth among the animals in a lowly stable, and when she and Joseph had to take Jesus and flee for their lives to Egypt. And much later, she watched as the son she gave birth to and loved was arrested, beaten, and killed on a cross. Where is the favor and blessing in that? However, God's blessing and favoring do not necessarily mean that life will be easy, that we will get our own way or live happily ever after. If God had wanted our discipleship to be easy, then he would not have come into the world through the difficult situation of an unwed virgin. So what is it about Mary that made her highly favored? Mary understood that her favoring and blessing by God are not dependent upon or determined by the circumstances of her life. Mary teaches us to look and live more deeply, to look beyond the circumstances of life and see God within us, and trust that God sees more for and about us than we often see for ourselves. With Mary, and as it should be with every one of us, it comes down to obedience. Humbly, Mary put herself into the hands of God and sacrificed so that God's will could be done in the world. In her own words, let it be with me according to your word. So how is it with you? Have you felt God tugging you in a particular direction? Is there something in your life you would like to change but don't know how? Is God calling you to do something like Mary that you think would be impossible? I think the truth is that we all have something. God is always calling us to something new to reach out to others, to shine a light in our world when it feels like the darkness is taking over. As we transition from Advent to Christmas and await the arrival of the Christ child, Mary's story moves us all from whom we, who we think we are to what God has called us to be. Remember, 
With God, nothing is impossible. An old, childless couple can be given new life. A virgin can bear a child who came to save us. We can all be forgiven for the wrongs we have committed. Death can be defeated. Lives can be transformed. Love can be discovered and faith rekindled. Like Mary, we must go to that deep place where we ponder and treasure. Pondering and treasuring asks us to wait, to be quiet and listen, to be still and receptive, and to be open and vulnerable to God's life in our own. This has been a difficult year for all of us, and we've all had to go to that deep place within us to make sense of what is happening in our world so that we are able to soldier on. As we isolate in our homes, we find ourselves waiting, waiting for this pandemic to pass. We find ourselves watching, watching for signs of good news, for signs of hope. We find ourselves longing, longing for a return to the patterns of life that gave us so much comfort and meaning. And we find ourselves hoping that this too shall pass, that the dawn shall break on a new day for us and for our world. Yes, there's something about Mary. There's also something about us. Amen. And now standing, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found on page 52. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now preparing ourselves for the prayers of the people. We respond to the intercessions that are in your people of him. Um, Lord of creation and Lord of God, please equip us to serve you. Lord, you are with us wherever we go. You are our God and the rock of our salvation. You come to us each day and all of us. Lord, open our eyes to your presence. Open our hearts to your love. Open our minds to your invite. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Today in the Anglican Communion Worldwide, we pray for the mission agencies and their ministries throughout the Anglican Communion, including
including mothers getting in and out of well. In the Anglican Church of Canada, we pray for Reverend Dr. Irene Scully and the staff of Faith and Worship Ministry, Rachel Lickman of the head of Youth Ministries, and Reverend Ken and Dr. Scott Charman at Canonical and Interfaith Relations Ministry. In the Evangelical Church of Canada, we pray for the National Bishop Susan Johnson and Reverend Paul Sears and Gretchen Peterson, who are assistants to the National Bishop. We pray for our friend Linda Nichols, our Diocesan Bishop Jeff Wittell, our National Indigenous Archbishop Mark McDonald, our Metropolitan Great Crew Wilson, and the Diocese of Athabasca. We pray for the Bishop of our Companion Diocese, Michael Lugor, and the Parish of St. Peter's in Kijiji, and their priest, Reverend Pablo and Scotty. At St. Luke's in our parish temple of prayer, we pray, we pray for Ernie and Bernice Campbell, Alvin and Diane Capadrilla, Amanda and Jordan Cole, Dee and Sam Church. We pray that Reverend Naboth, Dama, Ruda, and Adon will soon be united in heaven. We pray for all those mourning the loss of loved ones during this Christmas season. Lord, we give thanks for the peace of this place, the deep and lasting peace you give to us. We pray for all who go out on mission, for all who proclaim the good news. We remember house groups, church planters, and all who build up the body of Christ. We give thanks for all who, with various talents, seek to establish your kingdom. Lord of all creation, we give us to serve you. We pray for all in those various callings, that they may be sensitive to the needs of others and to the world about them. We remember the unemployed, the recently redundant, and those who have never worked. We pray for all organizations and agencies that care for the poor and rejected of our world. Lord of all creation, we, us us we give thanks that you come to us in our homes and in our work. We give thanks that we have found favor with you and that you love us. In our homes, Make us attentive to your word and ready to do your will. We pray for expectant mothers, for lone parents, for those adopting children. We remember children in places of danger and violence, those being led astray by others. Lord of all creation, Lord, you are our strength and salvation. You alone can make us whole. You alone give life which is eternal. We pray for all who are in need at this time, for those whose lives lack peace, for all who are disturbed. We pray for the homeless, for the workers' shelters, for the street children of our world. We pray for all who are caring for the needs of others. We remember all who are in trouble or in sickness. We pray for those who are sick and for those who have asked us to. Brooke Allen, Haley Shute, Anne Carell, Isabella Carell, Ellen Ferguson, Charlie Gerard, Evelyn Hahn, Steve Kiash, Arnold O'Dell, Debbie Reed, Brian Reed. Dennis Sweeney, and Sharon Wright. We also pray for those names forwarded to the prayer group and those known only to us. Lord of all creation, we, we give thanks for all who have faithfully served you and are now in the fullness of your glory. We pray for loved ones who part. Lord of all creation, O oh God, it is your will to fulfill heaven and earth in a single peace. 
Let the design of your great love shine and give peace to your church. Peace among the nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Please stand for the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with us. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, who chose the Virgin Mary, full of grace, to be the mother of our Lord and Savior, now fill us with your grace, that we in all things may embrace your will, and with her rejoice in your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Amen. This brings to a close our service of morning prayer. I do have a few announcements uh, to make. Uh, first of all, there will be two services held at St. Luke's uh, on Christmas Eve. One of the services will be at 4 p.m. and the other will be at 8 p.m. Uh, in order to have an idea of how many people will be attending each service, uh, we would like uh, 
people to indicate which service they are coming to. There is a, a sign-up sheet as, that, as when, when you came in uh, for you to sign up. And for those who are uh, joining us online this morning, uh, you can uh, either phone the church or email uh, to let the office know. The phone number is 223-6413. There will also be a service Christmas morning at 8, and that one is virtual only, I believe. And uh, so Reverend Naboth will be back for all three of those services. He had to be out of town today. Uh, another one, uh, Maureen and Audrey would like to thank all the Altar Guild ladies, past and present, for their faithful dedication to the Lord and St. Luke's, for preparing the church for all the services and the extra work behind the services. Thank you to Reverend Naboth for his guidance during the changes of setting up for services during this pandemic. The Altar Guild is a very important part of St. Luke's and each member is very appreciated. Thank you and Christmas blessings to everyone. Are there any other announcements this morning? Marlene? Unless it's a, 
a general overall where money is raised, and then uh, we can take that money and use it for the necessities in the church. But when something is specific, it won't go to that specific. So I hope that I have made that um, address that to our parishioners. And I wish to thank our parishioners who brought that forward uh, because it's you that make this possible. So we definitely want to do what's in your best interest. Thank you. Thank you, Marlene. John? Thank you. 